Hello, beloveds. Welcome, welcome, beloveds. Welcome, subscribers. Thank you, new subscriber, for subscribing to the channel, following us, uh, resonating with our message that we get out here, uh, sharing our information. You know, anyone that, you know, would resonate with our message, please invite them to the channel. You can support us at our website in the links below. You can follow us and you can donate as well. Today, I wanted to talk about the Moors and the impact I believe they had on the matriarch empire. I think they were the core, front and center of that fall. I really do. I really believe that the, you know, that those uh, that break in Egyptian, in Egypt, when those patriarchs begin to uh, uh, disagree with the matriarchs there in Egypt and there was such a break there, I believe that those Moors were those patriarchs in Egypt. I believe that. Yes, I do. I know that's strange to probably think, but I believe that that is the dots I put together through my research and and looking at the ancient Hebrews and and looking at all that. I was just like, wow, you know. So I'm gonna put the dots here for you today and share my theory with you and just do my research because you really have to research and history is always changing. They have really covered up a lot of things. So it's up to us to ask the real hard questions and get really inquisitive about finding ourselves and finding things out. And that divine insight will kick in. And that's kind of what has worked for me. Uh, that has really worked for me is being very curious and reading and going down rabbit holes and asking questions and saying, oh, and uh, that the ancestors uh, sharing divine insight with me and it has been on target, you know, and it'd it be days I'd be like, I can't find a book on that. And ancestors be like, but that's the way it happened. And then later I run into information that confirms that, yeah, it's just the way the ancestors told me. It's nothing different. Now, today I'm going to talk about the Moors, and in order to do that, I have to talk about patriarchy and where it began. And we're going to start from there, and I'm going to be, there's going to be some moving parts and shifting here. So this may be a long video, very long video, because there's a lot of information that I'm bringing to the forefront, and some of it is new. Some of it, this information is going to be new. Uh, things I've never talked about on my channel but I'm going to talk about them and let me just jump in here the origin of patriarchy in the West is generally traced back to Mesopotamia or the crescent fertile now uh, right in that crescent the fertile crescent so when you think of patriarchy, that's where it was born. That's where they say that they can see it coming from. And they say this were the, the men in Sumer. Right now, present day, uh, Iraq. They claim naming and ownership rights over their children and were gaining control over women's bodies. Okay, so they start claiming women. They start, you know, uh, dominating women. There are many differences between Sumer and Egypt, but one of the most apparent is the government. Sumer was the world's first ever civilization, which had a society ruled by kings who were absolute dictators. Pharaohs ruled Egypt in a more balanced way with power being shared amongst both pharaohs and his subjects. Okay, so they had an illegalitarian uh, syst uh, system. Now, they're mentioning pharaohs here. 
they're mentioning pharaohs here but i really don't believe pharaohs had the ultimate power as the empress did the matriarch i believe these pharaohs you know there was more pharaohs uh than they care to mention i think most of them asked as governors you know or president so to speak but the matriarch was uh pulling the strings behind it all she they would have to be voted in again they shared this power this was an illegal si uh, system okay so it was set up by uh matriarchs and so we see uh we see here that the summer the patriarchs they were extreme they wanted ownership they wanted to own things and we kind of see that in our present day For summer was patriarchal, though, it was a matronial, worldwide matronial uh, society. You heard it here. Before summer was patriarchal, it was a matronial, worldwide matronial societies abounded before the creation of patriarchy or colonization. So you're hearing it right out here. There was a matriarch society. You can see that here. You see the Iana with the wings again this will tie you into isis you, you know it kind of reminds you of isis i want to get more in, in, into the goddesses but that's another video but you see her this was the first uh art artifact that was here before you see the sumerian gods here and you see them kind of copying there but you see the the goddess here she uh, Anna, she seems to be worn she seems to be Put here first she seems like she's been there for a while before the patriarchs developed these Sumerian gods of theirs okay patriarchy become embedded with the transition from substance living to agriculture because this was an agriculture society we had uh advanced development in agriculture so there was plenty of food there was plenty of everything you know we had advanced that you know matriarchs had advanced that because we want to feed our children we didn't want the starvation we didn't want anyone going hungry so we had that was advanced there we had mapped that out the formation of cities and the rise of militarism this seems to be the pattern of patriarchs you know they want the rise of these big cities. They want to kind of go away from agriculture and they want to build these big cities and build these big armies and conquest. Patriarchs have urged in a surviving population, not a thriving one. Man does not entirely understand his nature. And if men, if men will understand their nature and really understand why we needed that matriarch society or divine feminine society to take care of humanity this would have never i don't think it you know we wouldn't have had this experience but again some men just don't listen okay some men just don't listen and then you have these men that don't listen and then it seemed like the other ones just follow suit man has a degenerate genetics it's very important for us to understand this and it's very important for men to understand that because we men have studied women but men has not studied his own genetics they'll tell you things about women or they think they know things about women but man he really don't own you know he he can uh reassure or reinsure or secure his superiority or authority but to know his own thinking and to know his own mind and behavior he really don't know that because he do so much focusing on people catering to him he doesn't really get a chance to do any self-reflection because everything was set up in his favor so how would he have the time you know to do any reflection because that's what patriarch does they don't have time to reflect because it's it's designed to be catered to them just like uh racism was designed for white people to benefit from it's the same thing patriarchy and racism is the same thing it's designed for them to benefit from 
and somebody has to be oppressed for them to benefit okay in this day with patriarchy women and children quite naturally humanity seems to be oppressed by this type of narcissistic behavior so we must a man must understand his genetics he has a limited amount of genetics a genetics to work with versus the xx chromosome look at this he's very limited he's very limited really you know man has specific he was specifically designed to procreate that's why they always thinking about sex most of them always thinking about sex always thinking about sex they feel good when they work and they can be able to provide for their family if they can provide and manually get out there and work they feel good that feels their pride that becomes their identity okay they were built that's what they were designed to do and protect when a man can protect his family he feels proud he feels secure and then the woman can trust him there is a certain amount of trust that's what he was designed for that's why you have him going in want to have sex or you see a lot of uh, essay sexual abuse that comes on when they they dominate or conquest happens then they go in and they reconstruct and they build things and all that stuff and then they build a military to go to war this has been that this has been a repetitive thing for them because they caught up in survival mode they're living out of their chakra their lower chakra their root chakra they have not uh open up the other chakras to live out uh their div their divinity or even connect with the divine feminine they haven't done that yet not many of them these things are survival all this is survival mode. this is not thriving man has to be led to meet certain goals even when a man was leading he had he had the elders and things behind him and even then he didn't make choices he didn't make he made choices it, it, it would be a whole committee to have to go in and and vote on that okay and there would be a lot of work that has to be done before a man can even think about uh, making political choices yeah he focused on protection and he came to the committee about if there was a protection uh issue going on a survivor uh, uh issue going on he went to the elders and they would advise him what to do okay man has to be led on certain goals he needs instruction when man fails to have goals or instructions they will repeat the same mistake and they don't need to be getting instruction from each other they need to be getting instruction from the divine feminine because that's who uh is receiving divine guidance okay the woman is receiving divine guidance from the divine feminine it flows through her okay i talked about how women have this connection that was in my other video he doesn't have any of that he doesn't have a connection with mother earth like that he doesn't he should not be spiritually in this you know leadership and he should not be globally leading he should not be globally leading maybe a tribe or something like that but not globally he does he's not designed for that men are simply programmed different this is something women we must learn to understand and men must learn to understand they need to learn more about themselves and trust the experience that women are saying that we have with them and and just looking at our society that's enough i shouldn't have to say any anything we know when we see a man or a woman sees a man and, and he looks dangerous we are afraid you don't see men being afraid of women you what's women are afraid of men okay Now let's shift gears here for a moment because I got to go back to Abraham uh, and kind of talk about his story because that's where the patriarchs come from. Abraham came from Ur. He came from Sumer. That's where he came from. He came and he, he, he went there. He left from Ur, him and Sarah, 
and they moved into Egypt. I think there was something going on in, in, in Sumer or Egypt. I can't think there was a drought or something that was going on there. But anyway, him and Sarah, and but remember, uh, Abraham had a big house. He had many people with him. So he was very influential as well, okay? He was not a poor man. So you see Abraham uh, going into uh, Egypt uh, from Ur. And, and when you when I read the story about Abraham and, and him trying to connect with this God, you know, he was certainly fanatical. He certainly put me in the mind of some of the fanatical uh, priests they talk about uh, the matriarchs had experience with in ancient Egypt. When I wrote my book, Matriarch the Patriarch, I talk about these fanatical uh, patriarchs that the matriarchs, you know, they they couldn't reason with them you know they were they were forming and they 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 it kind of separated because you have these patriarchs begin to build on top of some of the matriarch structures or uh you know build separate structures from from the matriarch so you have a, a, some type of civil uh you know unrest going on there in uh in egypt so you have him going to Egypt and 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 Sarah has the son uh and she's known as a prophetess in the ancient world and and the patriarchs were very careful into weaving these matriarchs into their story and for a good reason like I've already said these women were known as syllables and I'm sure uh when I wrote my book uh, when I read the book the Sybil I found out that Sarah was really a Sybil she was actually a prophetess, a Mama Wati prophetess, a goddess prophetess. And so he married her. It's, 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 it's you know, if you don't like this religion anymore and, and, and you just, and you think you're a goddess, I'm a goddess, why are you marrying this woman? Because she had divine authority. She had uh, experience in those rituals. She already had her connection with the divine. Now he said, you know, they said uh, uh, Abraham was God's friend. They was friends. But again, in their Bible, in their in their religion, they describe Sarah as a prophetess. They are not describing Abraham like that. Okay, so I talked about that in my book. They strategically they're strategically weaving themselves so they can have some divine authority and you go on we go on and you're going to see that again as we move on with this story so he's so fanatical about his patriarch god he's willing to sacrifice his only son see how fanatical that is what parent does that would a mother do that would a mother god sacrifice her child like that no let's review the abrahamic patriarchs that are in egypt they claim to worship this one true god okay yet he marries a goddess you know he he marries this woman that that worshiped the goddess because i'm sure she had this connection with the goddess divine feminine sarah was known as a prophetess in the bible most of these women served as symbols we already went over that and she would have been taught some rituals okay so that's very interesting to know but yet he has no relationship, you know, no real signs of relationship with this God. These people don't. These 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 Hebrew so-called Hebrew Israelites, they don't have no relationship with these people. And we'll see that as we move on uh, with this God. And we'll see that when we move on. Now in the Bible, it says that Abraham came from Ur, which was Sumer. And we find that there was, uh, you know, there was something going on in Ur, uh, which caused him to settle in Egypt. And he settled there for, you know, for centuries. Because, I mean, uh, there was a lot of his descendants who stays there. And keep in mind that, you know, there was a many people in his house. He was a man of great influence. And many men that had his same interests that were in Sumer or followed him into Egypt 
and so and they stayed there for uh you know for a while for some centuries you know and contributed a lot to the egyptian empire so much so you know the descendants they they might as well might as well have been egyptians because that's all they knew because some of them was born in egypt so they immigrated to the matriarch kingdom egypt and i'm quite sure he knew that this was a matriarch empire uh and and this is where they had things that were plentiful here because they didn't have that they didn't have whatever they needed they didn't have that in sumer and ur they had to come to this matriarch empire again because it was bountiful they would have had all the food they would have been advanced in agriculture growing and making sure that all their citizens had food okay they they that was their job that was their job to make sure they you know uh to take care of their people all right now but let's focus on these patriarchs so now we have abraham uh he is he's going into egypt and all his descendants there uh, and now you know they they are the so-called hebrews who left egypt but they did not call themselves uh hebrews these people that were from the line of abraham or uh, uh, came to egypt with abraham they did not call themselves hebrews israelites they did not call themselves that no they did not they simply was known as afram when they left egypt they were called afram means to break away so that let you know that that at some point they were citizens of the major arc empire okay they were citizens of the matriarch empire they had been there so long they came from ur uh sumer and they settled in egypt and they had been there for centuries now they had been there for centuries uh and so when they left egypt they were known as the ephraim the people who broke away a f r i m now what is interesting here i really don't believe these people were enslaved there is historically, you know, I think these Hebrews were trying to overthrow the matriarch empire. I think these men, these were the same men that I wrote about, uh, they talked about in Egypt. Okay, it lines up. It lines up because there is no historic the, the Egyptians never talk about anybody being enslaved. This was a matriarch empire. Why would they need to enslave anyone? Everything was bountiful. Everybody had what they need. And everybody was at one mind. Everybody was benefiting from everything that they were doing. So there was no need uh for to enslave anyone. Okay? I know this is probably the first time you're looking at it from this type, this from this, this, this uh, I'm sorry, this perspective. But yeah, I believe they were trying to overthrow the matriarchs. The here, in fact, history historians say there is no archaeological or historical record of Israelites being in Egypt as slaves or otherwise. I know that is shocking, but there's, there's, even when you see the hieroglyphs, well, we'll go to those in a minute, there is no sign of anyone in distress of being enslaved. Again, you know, these people that left there telling this story, again, they had to seem like victims because they were brutal people. They had to they had to cry victim. Again, that's that's kind of toxic. They had to act like they was victim because they wasn't uh it wasn't an exodus, it was an exile. We had to exile those people out of here. We had to escort them out of here because they had become uh, you know, fanatical and a little bit violent. So we had to escort them people out of there and tell them they couldn't come out. They dispersed some everywhere. Okay, there is no historical evidence showing that 
these people were enslaved. And if you was enslaved and, and somebody put you out, you don't got time to be stealing stuff because they said they took stuff from the Egyptian empire, from the residency. They were taking jewelry. They were taking treasures from some of that. And then before they left, this so-called God killed the firstborn children so they could possibly kill, poison these people children. It's gonna possibly poison these people children. Okay, so they were not enslaved. The biblical story, Joseph uh, and his brothers building an Israelite presence in Egypt may have origins in the reign of, you know, again, see, they're telling this story. Joseph and his brothers building an Israelite uh, presence in Egypt may have been the origins of, they, they, they saying the story come from somewhere else. It may have been the, uh, the story of, of some Canaanites. And then we see Moses try on several occasions. He comes in and he's an Egyptian priest. So he goes in to the matriarchs. So what I'm thinking to me, the matriarchs has, uh, uh, the patriarchs has really gotten his attention. Uh, they have really gotten his attention. He's really, you know, thinking, you know, I'm from these people or whatever. Because that's what it says. And he, he says he was from those people. Because he was adopted. Moses was adopted. And so he finds out he's from these people. And he's like, oh, these are my people. So the patriarchs had run, won him over. And so he tries on several occasions to convince uh, the matriarchs or the Egyptians that his God is the one only God. You see him with this staff and they eat up the other staff. But again, he's using Egyptian magic. He was trained in that art. He was raised by the Egyptian mother. He was raised by these matriarchs. Yet the Hebrew or friend people have no relationship with God. They don't even know God. They're too busy worshiping the Egyptian gods there. They don't even know this God that Moses is talking about. Okay, and, and Moses is the only one who can talk to this God. Sound to me like the beginning of, of the Catholic Church, like the Holy See, like he the only one can talk to God. You know, the Catholic, kind of, but again is the beginning of that to me. That's what it sounds like to me. Moses, a man raised out of Egyptian priest, led so-called Ephraim people out of Egypt upon exiting the Ephraim people, robbed some of the Egyptian residents and probably poisoned the firstborn. I already said that. Okay, and this certainly sounds like some patriarchs to me. This sound sounds like an act of war to me. Some type of uh, act of war, a disrest that went on there. And they had to exile, uh, put those people out. Because they really wanted to take charge of that. They wanted to own that. These men wanted to own that. They want, let me move on. Abraham and patriarchs, patriarchs would have been skilled in architecture, construction, uh, waterways, Freemasonry, art, sciences. They were basically uh, absorbed all the Egyptian culture before they were exiled out of Egypt. So they had been here for centuries. Some of them were born here. That's the only thing they knew was Egypt. So they would have been, you know, educated by the Egyptians. And that was very, uh, very advanced uh, knowledge. And then it already says Sumer, they came from their own advanced civilization as well, but it was not thriving. They had to come over to the matriarch empire to uh, survive and they thrived pretty well. Uh, they did a lot of work, a lot of construction and helped the uh, uh, ancient Egyptian expand and build their empires and help them with certain projects. They were very big contributors to the society. You know, I can see where they felt like they wanted, they, they wanted to get beat, do more, or they wanted to be in control, but <laughs> That's certainly not how that worked. They wanted more. And that's just not how the, the matriarch society thrived. They wanted to thrive. We have these patriarchs that want to come over and want to own stuff and take stuff over. And that's just not how the matriarch system was because the earth belonged, the, the, 
the earth was it didn't belong to us we were barring the earth and so the way we lived we did things to complement us living on mother earth it wasn't to dominate you know we wanted to share our uh advancements and we didn't mind them coming into egypt uh selling and many people you know we had many people uh from africa coming into egypt egypt settling we didn't mind that you know we did not mind that remember Moses has to teach these people about their new God. They don't know nothing about their God. He had to get the Ten Commandments. I certainly believe this was a group of men that was demanding more than what they deserved. Okay, they were just dissatisfied, uh, you know, with that empire. And I'm sure women had the right to choose over their body. So if, if, if they wasn't meeting the, the women's standards you know maybe someone was having some problems getting wives i don't know but you can see them strategically marrying some of these egyptian women okay so here they don't seem like they're in distress they don't seem like they're being whipped or beat or any of that i don't see any whips or anything like that it's showing that these people are being hurt i see masons freemasons people uh, mixing stuff and, and building stuff. This is what I see. These people do not look like they in distress. Okay. So Ephraim or Hebrew people migrate and disperse into various areas. Again, please keep in mind, many of them did not call themselves Hebrews or Israelites okay they did not call themselves that when they were leaving there the term they use is aphrim the people broke away them the breakaway people they moving away that's what they call them so they go into iberia peninsula and that's leading into europe okay they'll go there now some of them go down into